Hi folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a very specific part of the revolver called the cylinder stop. It's an important part. It is a, an instrumental factor in keeping the cylinder aligned correctly. Not as much on Colt revolvers, but on Smith & Wesson certainly it's extremely important. Uh, the Colt depends a little bit more on the hand, but it is still a, a very critical part for cylinder lockup and keeping that all in alignment while the revolver is firing. So what you have here is you have this little coil spring and you have this foot that is inside of the little cylinder pocket here. You have an oblong hole in it that sits on this pin and you kind of have this notch in the back where this little foot from the front of the trigger fits into and you have an angled surface on the bottom of it you can see that let's see grab this here you can see that there that's angled upward now this does two different things depending on what the trigger is doing to it that's why you have this oblong hole here and kind of this free and wild spring is that it's needing to move in two different ways depending on the input that it's receiving. So if you're sitting here like this, the revolver has the trigger forward, it's in a condition where it's getting ready to fire. When you pull the trigger, it pivots the cylinder stop. And you can see that that foot in the back moves down. Now while this is happening, the back of the trigger moving up while the front is moving down while it's pivoting on the pin there will be causing your cylinder to begin rotating. Once it gets that cylinder rotated enough, which is based on this dimension here, it will override. And you see it snap across like that. So let's do it again. We're pulling the trigger back, the cylinder stop, moves down. At this point in time, the cylinder is rotating. And then right now, snap, it pops back up. And so that way when the cylinder finishes its rotation, it's there waiting on it. So it'll ride in this little recess here. You can actually see some of the scoring maybe from it. Yeah, right there, you can see some of the scoring. So it's sitting there waiting for it to where when this finishes its rotation, it locks it in solid. Now, what happens after that all is done, the hammer's dropped, it's fired. At this point in time, it's going to behave a little bit differently. Now, the rebound arm, rebound lever, being powered by the V-spring back here on a Colt, is going to start pushing the trigger back forward. And it's really what it's doing, it's pushing the back of the trigger down, but that's irrelevant. And now this foot here that previously pulled down in that notch is moving back forward against this angled surface here. And so rather than just pivoting it in reverse, which I mean, it really can't do that. If it, if it pushes up, just straight up, the top of this interior piece of the cylinder stop is going to hit the frame, so it can't go up anymore. You'd also have this resting inside of the, the notch corresponding to the fired cylinder. So it can't do that. So what it does instead, because it has this oblong hole, is it's pushed forward. So it pushes this out of the way without unlocking the cylinder. So you'll notice that it's pushing this forward, but it's not really pivoting it down. And so then, as it comes up, that moves forward for it and snaps back in. Now it does move that cylinder stop a little bit on the rebound, but it doesn't disengage it. So it disengages it on the pull, and then on the rebound, 
it doesn't disengage, it just pushes it forward a little bit so that it can reset to its rest position. So what you get is a pivot. You see it's not really sliding. We get a pivot and then a slide. So it's one spring and one part making two very different motions depending on whether you're pulling the trigger or releasing the trigger. And it's all based on this area right here and how that foot pulls it down. And it's kind of pulling it down and back so it's not trying to do anything funny with it. It's just pulling it down. And at this point, it pivots on the pin using that front part of the hole. And then on release, it pushes it forward until it snaps back in to reset. Pretty clever to have such a simple mechanism that works in two different ways, depending on what it needs to do at that particular time. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful and uh, you learned something from it. It uh, is easy to see here on the Python, but this is more or less the same on a lot of different revolvers. Thanks for watching.